Mr. This is the gentleman from North Carolina seek recognition. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I move that the House suspend the rules and pass H.R. 24 as amended. The clerk will report the title of the bill. H.R. 24, a bill to require a full audit of the Board of Governors of the Federal Reserve System and the Federal Reserve Banks by the Comptroller General of the United States and for other purposes. Pursuant to the rule, the gentleman from North Carolina, Mr. Meadows, and the gentleman from Maryland, Mr. Cummings, each will control 20 minutes, and the chair recognizes the gentleman from North Carolina. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. I yield myself uh, such time as I may consume. Without objection. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. I ask unanimous consent that all members may have five legislative days within which to revise and extend their remarks and include extraneous materials on the bill under consideration. Without objection. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, Mr. Speaker, H.R. 24, the Federal Reserve Transparency Act, directs the GAO to conduct, conduct a full audit of the Federal Reserve. The Dodd-Frank uh, legislation mandated a GAO audit of the Fed, but that audit issued by the GAO in July of 2011 focused solely on certain issues concerning emergency credit facilities. GAO remains restricted under the current law for conducting a broader audit of the Fed that includes, for instance, a review of the Fed's monetary policy operations and its agreement with foreign governments and central banks. Under this bill, the GAO, as the investigative arm of Congress, is allowed to conduct the audit that reviews all these transactions and is required to report such findings uh, of the audit to Congress. Now, while Congress should not manage the details of monetary policy, it needs to be able to conduct oversight of the Fed. The Fed was created by Congress to be a central uh, bank independent of influence of the U.S. Treasury. It was never intended to be a second Treasury Department. In recent years, the Fed's extraordinary interventions into the economy and financial markets have led some to call into question its independence. The Fed remains ultimately responsible to the American people and their elected representatives. This is why H.R. 24 has strong bipartisan support, with 228 co-sponsors on both sides of the aisle. A version of this bill passed the House of Representatives' last Congress by a vote of 327 to 98. I want to thank Chairman Henseling for working with me to bring this legislation to the uh, floor. I will insert our letters of exchange in the congressional record. I uh, encourage and urge my colleagues to support this legislation. And Mr. Speaker, I reserve the balance of my time. The gentleman from Maryland. Nice. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. I yield myself such time as I may consume. Without objection. I rise, to Mr. Speaker, in opposition to H.R. 24. Let me be clear, I support transparency surrounding the operations of the Federal Reserve. Transparency helps ensure that the Federal Reserve is implementing policies that will achieve the objectives given to it by Congress. Supporting maximum employment, price stability, and moderate long-term interest rates. I emphasize, however, that the Federal Reserve has been subject to audits since 1978. Further, the Dodd-Frank Wall Street Reform and Consumer, Consumer Protection Act, which I supported, significantly expanded the authority of the Government Accountability Office to examine the Federal Reserve's operations. It also required the Federal Reserve to make public a wider range of data than it had previously disclosed. For example, Dodd-Frank authorized GAO to begin auditing discount window operations and required the Federal Reserve to begin releasing information about emergency credit transactions and discount lending programs. Critically, however, Dodd-Frank ensured that transparency surrounding the Fed's operations was expanded in a way that would not compromise the Fed's ability to review and alter monetary policy without fear that its internal deliberations would be made public. <clears throat> Mr. Speaker, if enacted, this bill would severely curtail the independence that has been a hallmark for the Federal Reserve and has been essential to its ability to strengthen our country. Specifically, H.R. 24 would permit GAO to audit the communications that members of the Federal Reserve's Board of Governors have with each other and with staff regarding monetary policy. 
The act would also permit GAO to audit transactions conducted under the direction of the Federal Open Market Committee. Such audits, which could be conducted on an almost real-time basis under this bill, could have a chilling effect on the Fed. If board members know that their statements may become public, they may be inhibited from speaking candidly about the economic trends that uh, are observing or the monetary policies they believe would best respond to current conditions. Further, simply by requesting that the GAO conduct certain audits, members of Congress could seek to influence the Fed's deliberations and policy decisions. The Federal Reserve is responsible for asserting monetary policies that will support our nation's long-term growth. We should expand transparency surrounding the Federal Reserve in a way that will ensure short-term political considerations do not, do not unduly influence the Federal Reserve's monetary policy-making responsibilities. The Oversight Committee has <clears throat> not held a single hearing or heard a single witness regarding the far-reaching consequences that passage of this legislation could have. I oppose this legislation and I urge members to vote against it and I reserve the balance of my time. The gentleman from North Carolina is recognized. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. I will yield as much time as he may consume to my distinguished colleague from the state of Georgia, a man who has worked very hard on this particular issue, uh, the gentleman from Georgia, Mr. Brown. Without objection, the gentleman is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. In the United States Constitution, Article 1, Section 8, where it enumerates the powers of Congress, one of those powers is, as I'm reading, to coin money, regulate the value thereof, and a foreign coin. In 1913, Congress abdicated its responsibility and its duty over to the Federal Reserve, and it's unconstitutional that we've done so, and it has caused some disastrous effects. I thank my friend, Mr. Meadows, for yielding me time to speak on behalf of H.R. 24, the Federal Reserve Transparency Act, better known as Audit the Fed. This is the same bill that passed the U.S. House in the 112th Congress by overwhelming bipartisan majority. This is a vital piece of legislation that will help to usher in a new area of transparency in this nation's monetary policy. And I'm pleased to speak on its behalf with my colleagues. Over the century since its inception in 1913, the Federal Reserve has controlled our nation's monetary policy and therefore our economy under a veil of secrecy. Throughout these last 100 years, Congress has only exercised a relative small degree of oversight of the Federal Reserve. This lack of accountability has led to grievous consequences, and this must end. For instance, since the Federal Reserve establishment in 1913, the value of the U.S. dollar has fallen 95 percent. In other words, the value of today's dollar is approximately worth one nickel of what a dollar was worth in 1913. What this does is cause a dramatic decline in the value of the U.S. dollar, and it's driven by easy money policies of the Federal Reserve. What's this mean in practical terms for the American people? The steady decline of the U.S. dollar punishes thrift and savings. It overrodes the value of those savings and harms older Americans living on fixed incomes. Just as bad, the expansion in money supply under the Federal Reserve has led to an unstable environment of booms and busts that have wrecked the financial security and stability of average Americans. This hurts poor people and senior citizens and the middle class the absolute most. Rich people will do fine with the policies of the Federal Reserve. Wall Street bankers and the big money folks are fine, but the policies of the Federal Reserve hurt poor folks. It hurts senior citizens. It hurts the middle class. It's not fair. Since the 2008 financial crisis, the Federal Reserve's balance sheet has grown. Since 2008, it has grown at an unprecedented rate and now contains $4 trillion worth of assets. At the same time, the enactment of Dodd-Frank financial reform has granted the Federal Reserve a greater role than ever in managing our economy and overseeing the regulation of our financial system. And yet, 
in spite of the undeniable, undeniable. Okay. I yield to the. Uh, I will yield the gentleman as much time as he may consume. The gentleman is recognized. Okay. Thank you. In spite of the undeniable importance of the Federal Reserve, current law specifically prohibits audits of the Federal Reserve's deliberations, discussions, or actions on monetary policy. In 2011, a partial audit of the Federal Reserve required by Dodd-Frank law found that the Fed has loaned $16 trillion to financial institutions, some of which were not even American, between 2007 and 2010. This incredible sum was quietly loaned out with no public notice and no congressional oversight. If this sort of activity is brought to light by just a partial audit, then I believe that further insights, this further highlights the absolute necessity of a full audit. The, this bill will require a full audit for the Board of Governors, for the Federal Reserve, and the Federal Reserve Banks within 12 months of enactment. The Federal Reserve is a creation of Congress, and it must, therefore, subject, be subject to the oversight and regulation of Congress. I must recognize and commend the, leader, the leadership in years of work by my friend and colleague, Dr. Ron Paul, on this important issue. Last Congress, Dr. Paul's bill amassed a bipartisan coalition that saw this legislation pass in a 327 to 98 vote. I'm deeply honored to carry on this legacy of Dr. Paul. I urge my colleagues here in the House to support this important piece of legislation, and I urge our friends in the Senate to take up this bill's counterpart, my medical colleague, Senator Rand Paul's S-209. And I yield back. The gentleman from Maryland is recognized. I assume the gentleman have other speakers. I'll continue to reserve. Gentleman from North Carolina. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. I would uh, like at this point to uh, yield to the gentleman from Kentucky uh, three minutes to Mr. Massey from Kentucky. Without objection, the gentleman from Kentucky is recognized for three minutes. Thank the gentleman from North Carolina. Mr. Speaker, I rise, rise today in support of my friend and colleague, Congressman Paul Brown's Federal Reserve Transparency Act, otherwise known as Audit the Fed. Our mutual friend and predecessor, Congressman Ron Paul, first introduced this bill back in 1983. His often lonely voice and courageous efforts to shed light on the secretive and harmful actions of the Federal Reserve have finally paid off over 30 years later. In July of 2012, Congressman Paul's Audit the Fed bill passed the House of Representatives by an overwhelming vote of 327 to 98. Sadly, it has yet to receive a vote in the Senate. As Congressman Ron Paul stated here on the House floor in 2011, in words that remain current and relevant today in 2014, quote, throughout its nearly 100 year history, the Federal Reserve has presided over the near complete destruction of the United States dollar. Since 1913, the dollar has lost over 98% of its purchasing power, aided and abetted by the Federal Reserve's loose monetary policy. How long will we as Congress stand idly by while hard-working Americans see their savings eaten away by inflation. Only big-spending politicians and politically favored bankers benefit from inflation. Since its inception, the Federal Reserve has always operated in the shadows without sufficient scrutiny of, or oversight of its operations. While the conventional excuse is that this is intended to reduce the Fed's susceptibility to political pressures, the reality is that the Fed acts as a foil for the government. When, whenever you question the Fed about the strength of the dollar, they will refer you to the Treasury and vice versa. The Federal Reserve has, on the one hand, many privileges of government agencies while retaining benefits of private organizations, such as being largely insulated from Freedom of Information Act requests. The Federal Reserve can enter into agreements with foreign central banks and foreign governments, and the GAO is prohibited from auditing these agreements. Why should a government-established agency whose police force has the federal law enforcement powers and whose notes have legal tender status in this country be allowed to enter into agreements with other foreign powers and foreign banking institutions with no oversight? 
particularly because the Fed has operated swap lines with foreign central banks and provided hundreds of billions of dollars of bailouts to foreign commercial banks. The Fed's negotiations with the European Central Bank, the Bank of International Settlements, and other foreign institutions should face increased scrutiny, most especially because of their significant effect on foreign policy. Given the currency crisis in Europe, and the prospect of the Fed propping up foreign governments or bailing out American banks invested in European debt, this issue is of especially pressing concern. Congressman Ron Paul's words are even more true today. Thank you. Thank you. Congressman objection. Ron Paul's words are even more true today than they were then. And that's why I urge my colleagues to vote in favor of this bill. It's time to force the Federal Reserve to operate by the same standards of transparency and accountability to the taxpayers that we should demand of all government agencies. Thank you, and I yield back. The gentleman from Maryland is recognized. We'll continue to reserve. Gentleman from North Carolina. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, at this point, we, we have no additional people we can, wishing to speak on this particular bill, but I would like to read one statement uh, from Senator Rand Paul. Uh, he said, it's time for more transparency in virtually every part of our government. I think most Americans can agree on that. And the Fed is the most logical place to start. I hope the pa House passes the audit, the Fed bill, and look forward to pushing this bill in, in the Senate. And I, I reserve the balance of my time. I would just... Gentleman from... Uh, I, I yield myself you know. sometimes I may consume. Uh, Mr. Speaker, again, I will be brief, but um, I urge members to vote against this legislation. I think it's a giant step in the wrong direction. With that, I yield back. Gentleman yields back, gentleman from North Carolina. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, you know, tonight we've, we've heard from uh, the distinguished gentleman from Georgia, who uh, not only has uh, authored this legislation, but has pushed uh, at every attempt to make sure that we have accountability and transparency. The American people deserve that. You know, when, when much of the crisis, the financial crisis, Mr. Speaker, was happening in, in uh, 2008, you know, this body, this very body debated over and over again on whether a stimulus should be put forth to stimulate the economy. At the same time, Mr. Speaker, the Federal Reserve was making investment dollars that made that stimulus package look very small in comparison. And yet, we are to assume that, like other government agencies, that they're doing everything correctly. Well, we know history has shown us that that's not always the case. I urge all my colleagues uh, to join me in supporting this particular bill, to support transparency, to let the accountability be with the American uh, people. And I yield back the balance of my time. The question is, Will the House suspend the rules and pass the bill H.R. 24 as amended? Those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed say no. No. In the opinion of the chair, two-thirds being in the affirmative. Mr. The Mr. Speaker. Yes. I ask for General the yeas. I, I ask for the yeas and nays. Yeas or nays are requested. All those in favor of taking this vote by the yeas and nays will rise and remain standing until counted. A sufficient, a, a sufficient number having risen, the yeas and nays are ordered. Pursuant to Clause 8 of Rule 20, further proceedings on this question will be postponed.